So, start of the new year. So, you might have had a Raspberry Pi for Christmas and wondering what to do with it. Also, traditionally, January is the time of New Year's resolutions and when people are trying to keep to the diets, lose some of the weight that they might have put on over Christmas. And I know, certainly in our house, one of the problems is you, even though that cake and biscuits might get locked away in cupboards, the urge is still too great for people to try it. So, the Raspberry Pi can give you a solution. And so, what we've got, we open the cupboard and we get the Raspberry Pi doing text-to-speech, driving the chicken, which you might have seen in the Twitter and chicken okay. uh, later. And uh, also, of course, there's a wireless connection and therefore you can send either a note to inform someone that they've been late night snacking or send them a tweet and shame them on their Twitter account that they are now eating cake. And so what we're going to do, we're going to show you how to build your own um, cupboard watcher uh, using the Raspberry Pi, Pi Face and about you know, just the tools that you find in the kitchen. You don't need anything special. Let's do it on the kitchen table. So let's get started. What we're going to do is going to sense to see whether doors are open. And so we've got these uh, magnetic reed sensors. So what you do, you mount a magnet on the door. You've got the reed sensor on the door frame. And when the door is closed, this magnet pulls the contacts across and the circuit is complete. And then when the door is open, the magnet moves away from, from inside the, the the contacts, so the contacts then spring open and then the Raspberry Pi can detect that the circuit's been opened. So these have got two, well they've got a, sec a set of contacts on the back but we're interested in the two silver ones. So what we're going to do, we're going to take some wire and then strip some off that. So. take a fair amount off and then give it a twist to stop it fraying and the other one and then we're going to bend it into a little sort of hook same with that then we're going to take these contacts bit of a tip here if you get the wire so the point goes around clockwise when you screw the screw up it pulls it in tight so we've got the wire coming out on the left hand side and that then just tips under and then I'm just going to pinch that screw it up tight same with the red one so the screw goes round to tighten up that way we want to have a wire coming in from that side else you find that it just pushes it out so clamp it get your screw screw it up tight put these two connected here and then we're going to connect one side to the end block in here which is marked zero volts screw that up Connect the other side to one of the contacts. In okay, case so we've gone in the first one, we've got the emulator showing there as before, we've got the inputs updated, and now as we can see, I'll bring the magnet near to the re relay, and you see that because the connection is in the first point here, so if we watch that screw indicator as we bring the magnet together you see it's detecting that so you can imagine that and you'll see later on in the video that we'll attach that to the door frame that to the door and then that way we know when the door's closed you get a circuit when the door opens then it breaks the circuit and we can detect the state of the house so we've got the detector in place and so next thing to do is we'll just add the speaker and this is just you can buy these from um, electrical stores they're just battery powered little speakers and amplifiers. So we turn that on, we plug this in and, and then we fire up a terminal and we're just going to test it. So the program we're going to use is called eSpeak. So we type in eSpeak and then in speech marks hello. If eSpeak isn't installed then you need to do apt get install eSpeak. Uh, whilst you've got it plugged into the network and then it will download and that will install that. 
and then you probably get we're going to run hello. this command. It says hello. We see a bit of errors, but we needn't worry too much about those. If, however, you don't hear any audio, it's probably because the audio is set to come out through the HDMI, in which case you need to run a command, which is um, you can find online and we'll link in the video. And if you just run that command, then it will switch it over from outputting audio to, on HDMI to outputting audio on the speaker. So, we've got the audio output, we've got a detector, and um, what we're going to do now, we're going to wire up the chicken. So, we, if you've not seen the chicken before in some of the, the tw tw Twitter and chicken videos, basically this is just a soft toy. All we've done is there's a switch in the bottom which turns it on and off, and we've put in two wires so that when you show up these two wires together, the chicken moves. So what we've got, we've got on the Pi face, we've got the relay contacts. So I'm going to put this in one side in the middle terminal of one of the, of the first relay. And then put the other side of this. So remember we said the relay works as a switch. So the center is, is one side and the other terminals, it turn, changes over from being connected from, from middle to one side to be connected to the other, other side. You'll notice on the board it says NO and NC and that's a standard way in electronics of referring to things which are normally closed and things which are normally open. So if I just touch this on the normally closed side, because it's normally closed, it's closed, the chicken starts moving. So we don't want that, we want to get the, the switch when it moves to be normally open, we want it to close and then turn the, the chicken on. So we'll put it in the normally open side. We tighten that up. And then the final test. So we go back to the emulator, click output pin one, it turns the relay on, the chicken moves, we turn it off again, the chicken stops. And that's it, we've got everything wired up now. So the final step is just to write the code. And in true Blue Peter style, here's one that I prepared earlier. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, start idle. So I've just double clicked on the idle icon. And then I'm going to open up the file that we've got. I call it Biscuit Watch. And I've got the file here. So you can see it's quite uh, straightforward. We've just got the imports. Uh, we're just using uh, the Raspberry Pi farm, which is the li rapid library we've got, uh, which makes it an easy way to, uh, to get the, the, twist it, the chicken to talk. Uh, we've imported PyFace.pfio as PyFace, so that's the interface board. Uh, we've set this constant time delay, so basically that just slows things down a bit, because we'll use that when we come on later on. So we've got the main start of the main program, Got an initialization of the Raspberry Pi farm of just our module for controlling the chicken. We then created this object chicken is Raspberry Pi farm dot chicken. Then we just send a message saying waiting for the door to open, so that's when we're going to start. Then we've got this while saying with true, so while true, so it's always going to keep looping round and round and round. So we're going to start going to the while state, it's going to see if the digital read is equal on pin one, which is where we've connected the switch. Uh, is equal to zero, so don't forget that um, it's it's a one when the door's shut and the magnet completes the circuit. When we break the circuit, it's a zero. And then we, if that's true, then we're going to start the wobble, then we're going to get the chicken to say, don't eat the cake, and then we're going to make the chicken stop wobbling, then we're going to go to sleep for this time delay, which we said was one second, and then what happens is it will just go keep going, because this is while true, it will just keep going round and round. So if the door's open and that's zero, it wobbles the chicken, says don't eat the cake, then stops the wobble, waits for a bit, and then tests that again. After we've closed the door, then we get this digital read will become one, and it will just skip over that statement, and then wait for a short delay, and then check again. So let's give it a test, shall we? So I'm going to say run, run module, it will say it must be saved. I've got the um, contacts made, put OK. And waiting for the door to open. Don't eat the cake. I mean, Don't eat 
to the cake. And the chicken's telling me not to eat the cake. Don't eat the so cake. We, we now close the door again and it stops. Right, so we've got all this tested, it all works. Next step is to fit it in the cupboard. So now we've finished all the parts, then it's time to install it in the cupboard. So you can see we've got the uh, magnetic re switch sensor uh, installed just stuck on with a sellotape by the door. On the door, you can see that we've got the magnet. So when the door's closed, the magnet um, pulls the contacts in and, and closes the circuit. When the door opens, the circuit's broken and the Raspberry Pi can detect that. Then we've also got the chicken, of course. We've got the speaker plugged in at the back and we've got a Wi-Fi, so we've got remote control of uh, the, so we've got network connection. All right, so I've put the uh, chicken and the Raspberry Pi in the cupboard. I wired it up, I've got the cable running to power down here. Because I've got the Wi-Fi connected, I can, uh, through the access point, I can connect remotely. So I've got my laptop. So I'm going to SSH into it. And I'm going to start the program. So the laptop says, working for door to open. So now I've actually finished with my laptop and put that away. And let's see whether it works. So if we open the door. Door is eaten, okay. And it works. Okay. And so obviously since we've got wireless access, what you could actually do, you could then use the connection, so as well as reading out, don't eat the cake, you could also tweet, or you could say that, oh, my diet has slipped, I've opened, I've succumbed, I've opened the door.